Hey guys, it's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto channel. Today we're getting back to Bitcoin, plus I've got a heap of cryptos to go through on the charts with you, and of course, crypto news. The main thing we want to look at today is Bitcoin and the fail on testing the 52 and 53k level, what I think is going on, whether it's a good time to buy. I'm going to check all of that out in the charts and on some news. Stick around as well because we've got some uh, other small cryptos which have seen some massive gains on them recently. All right, guys, you know what to do. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, bell notification icon, anything else on the checklist that I have forgotten, be sure to do. Let's dive in. Onto the market caps. Then we're looking at the total market cap here, 2.25 trillion. The top was around 2.5 trillion. So that's about 10% down from the tops. I come back to this because I want to understand where the money is flowing to. Bitcoin has seen about a 25% drop from its high, whereas the market cap has only seen 10% drop. So the money is staying in the market. It's just not going to Bitcoin. We've seen it go to Ethereum. We've seen it head to Cardano. Polkadot has recently had some extra uh, capital spent on it. Uniswap was up a little bit. Binance is holding its ground. Doge has obviously had uh, its day in the sun. Chainlink also moved into new all-time highs. Solana is holding ground. Polygon has been a big winner. So this money is flowing into other cryptocurrencies. Obviously, these are much smaller market caps than Bitcoin. So the total market cap has come down 10%, whereas the rest of the altcoins have started to move up. So that's how we're seeing a bearish Bitcoin, but a bullish cryptocurrency market. And this doesn't apply across the board. It's just major cryptos that have a good narrative going for them. They're useful in the ecosystem, just like Polygon Matic. So Matic has seen massive gains, like about 100% so far in the last seven days. But this is the highest layer two cryptocurrency in the top 20. I mean, it just hit 20 uh, in this last few days. So layer two is going to help out Ethereum a lot, whereas Cardano is its own blockchain, Polkadot's its own blockchain, uh, who else we have in here? Solana, its own blockchain, EOS, a separate blockchain. So Polygon is the highest layer two. So I think there is still a lot more room for Polygon to run, but as we'll see on the chart, it has shot up pretty hard. So keep that in mind. Looking at the ratio, the ETH to BTC ratio. Remember the narrative that is going to continue to play out in the markets. We're looking at a 8% uh, for Bitcoin value. So Ethereum is still up there. It's still getting close or at least comfortably at around that 50% level. Yesterday, it's down about a percent from that 50% level. So this is 50% of Bitcoin's market cap. Sorry if that if you don't really understand that. I was speaking to a friend last night. He kind of didn't understand what I was talking about when I'm talking about 50% or uh, getting halfway to Bitcoin's value. So that's the market cap. All right, I just thought I'll make that a little bit clearer. Checking the trends. Now, I only have Cardano in here because it is obviously seeing pretty big uh, moves at the moment on the price chart. And looking at Google Trends, we're now at 92. The previous high of 100 was, guess what? It was on the previous all-time high date, the day that I did a video talking about maybe it's probably a good time to sell some Cardano, take some profits, and I got ripped apart. You guys know that who, who have been following for some time. Cardano is a crypto that we've been calling very well on the channel here. We've been calling Bitcoin very well. Some of the drops that Bitcoin has had, which many uh, other analysts out there probably didn't see. And I give that credit to GAN and Wyckoff. So you guys are interested and you want to learn more, look at GAN theory, GAN analysis, and also Wyckoff as well. If you can study that, put some time into it, you'll be able to start to pick these markets as well because they, they their theory does very well in these small cryptocurrency markets, the whole cryptocurrency space, because it is extremely emotionally fueled and you can see people's emotions in the charts. That's what we're doing here. Looking at fear and greed, it's down to extreme fear. Yesterday, we we're fearful. Bitcoin has dropped again. I was looking at a level. Uh, we'll check that out on the charts as well. Three closes at a similar level. Now, that didn't come through. I was expecting a bounce. As I said, the rules work very well, but they're not 100%. So let's look at that on the chart uh, when we get there. But for now, we just need to note extreme fear, 20. Yesterday was fearful and then last week was greed and we had extreme greed last month. We've, we've gone the full spectrum in one month, literally. Extreme, fear, greed and extreme again. The only thing we haven't seen is neutral, but of course, there's been plenty of those 
hours within the last month that people have been neutral on the entire market. Despite Bitcoin seeing recent lows at around $45,000, there is still a lot of positive news out there. This is why I think it is partly profit taking and the Bitcoin market doesn't necessarily have to go up in a straight line. There can be good news and the market take a resting period. This piece of the Bitcoin cycle, where we currently see ourselves, it reminds me very much of 2017, but earlier on, around the, the May time, or at least the second dip that we saw in the market before we took off to the last half of the year where everything went absolutely crazy. So looking here, we've got Bitcoin may double this year despite energy concerns. So we've seen a lot of uh, concerns around the amount of energy that Bitcoin is using to be mined. I don't think that is really going to be a big thing long term because they'll figure it out as they're figuring it out now. And this is just short term scare in the market to give us a better buying opportunity or to scare out the people who really believe that Bitcoin's not going to come back from that. Uh, Pantera CEO believes that Bitcoin is going to be fine. Bitcoin has averaged more than a tripling, I suspect this is a spelling error, every year for 10 years. BTC has had a very consistent 10-year compound annual growth rate of 233%. So that's almost its entire history. It's done 233% every year, averaged out annual. Uh, log growth has been very consistent over the next several months. Definitely over the next years, it will resume its trend. BTC is well below its 10 year, so we're not in a bubble, we're not in overpriced territory, therefore maybe a good chance to buy, he suggested. I happen to agree with this and I see Bitcoin getting to that level where it's looking pretty good. Even if it fell another 10%, this is kind of that zone where we've got enough fear in the market to scare off uh, the, the new people and not have all that interest that pumps the price. So if you've got to have, uh, you, you have to have patience in this time if you're going to be picking up cryptos that are going to do well later on. And extreme fear, fantastic time to do that. More bullish signs for Bitcoin. As we can see on the chart, what we're looking at here is this dotted line. This is 2021, 10.9 billion are being hodled. So this is the total supply held by long-term hodlers. Thanks to glass nodes, uh, we've got 58% in circulation. So that 10.9 million BTC equals 58% of the current circulating supply. 2017, there was eight and a half million BTC being hodled and that was 50% of the supply. So now we're seeing a higher percentage being hodled in 2021. And it looks like we're through the accumulation zone. Oh, we're getting into the accumulation zone now. So this looks like the distribution just occurred. People selling out their Bitcoin as the price rose into weak noob hands. And now we are seeing probably a little bit of a drop. And I'll, as I said, we'll get to that on the charts. Proof of stake coins, Cardano and Polygon hit all time high after Musk slams BTC. I think we've seen this across the board. And we understand what's going on here. I think long term, these are going to do well. We've talked about that many times. Cardano, Polygon, Polkadot, anything proof of stake. And it's another good narrative for Ethereum as well as Ethereum's proof of stake. And the tweet from Musk recently that said they weren't going to buy any more Bitcoin, but they're not selling it. That just helps this narrative for uh, other cryptos to do well in this period. So I think partly their price increase is due to the tweet. And the other part is due to them actually having a good product or at least promising a good product to come out in the future. Ethereum onto how it's going to look at or what's going to happen with EIP 1559. This isn't new news, but it's good news to remind ourselves of potentially what's coming or why the price is rising. Ethereum is currently around $3,800. We just saw a recent peak of about $4,200, $4,300. And I believe it's probably due to the tweet from Musk talking about staking. And then we have the EIP 1559 upgrade coming up in July. So the London network hard fork in July. So just to remind ourselves of why these, this craziness is happening, we don't need a new piece of news every day to explain why the price is going up. It can be this piece of news, which is a big piece to Ethereum's puzzle moving forward, which is due to come out in July. So as more people find out, just maybe like yourselves, then it's going to increase the uh, demand for Ethereum because it is moving towards that tweet that whole idea of being more energy efficient, more green to the planet, etc. And so that's why I think this is a continued piece of news, which is going to work day after day for Ethereum. Also, Ethereum transactions per day have increased. It hit all time highs just a few days ago, 1.7 million transactions per day. 
and Bitcoins is around a quarter million a day. So it's it's a lot higher than Bitcoins and it continues to rise as you can see here from uh, one and a half now hitting new all time highs of 1.7 back down to around 1.5 but we have hit the new all time highs. Bad news for Bitcoin but as I said I think this will all wash out eventually. It's not bad news to the network of Bitcoin. It's just people not buying Bitcoin at the moment. Jack Dorsey Square is not buying Bitcoin for now after 20 million in losses. Sounds like a lot, but it's barely 10% of their total holdings. Square recorded a 20 million loss on its 220 million holdings. So it's not that big of a percentage loss overall. They can then claim that if they have the same sort of setup that Tesla has as well. At the end of the day, they'll probably end up buying it again. But for now, they probably have to please their shareholders or board members and not continue to buy into something that has lost them some money, which probably now isn't so now is probably a better time to be buying their Bitcoin rather than at other peaks as well. But you know, I'm not their board. Now onto some of the charts. And I want to bring up this video here just a couple of days ago, looking for the next hundred X hidden gem. This one is uniquely. This has just gone up about a hundred percent over the last day. That's against Ethereum value. I'll check out in just a moment. As you can see here, when I release this, the market cap was around 6.9 million. It is currently at about 13.9. So 7 million and 14 million. It has doubled since that video. Now I'm not giving the credit to myself or that video. Uh, it looks like they are getting their marketing done, which is what I talked about in the video. And sometimes these cryptos may take a lot longer than this, but this just happens to be one of those times where I put a video out two days ago and then yesterday they shoot up 100%. So pretty good return so far on this one. I just wanted to make mention to that because sometimes these smaller caps that we talk about on, online tend to stay dormant for some period of time until they actually pop. Uniquely, it looks like it is beginning its pop. Got to wait and see again. These things are very, very temperamental. Also, I wanted to say thank you guys. We're nearly at 150,000. I'm sure by the time you see this, we'll be at 150,000 on YouTube. We're going for 200,000 before the mid-year. Let's let's see if we can crack 200 by June. And I just want to say thank you to your comments as well when you're talking about uh, your uh, wins in cryptocurrency, how much you're learning from the videos, the technical analysis, and what's keeping you nice and grounded in your own investments. That's fantastic. That's all I'm putting the channel together for is so that you can stay grounded in your investments and you have less stress when you're investing. That is the best feeling. And if I can share that with as many people as possible, then I'm a happy guy. Looking at more things that make me happy, charts. Oxygen, this is a good looking crypto in terms of its chart. This could be a level of support around 260. I'm not sold on it yet, but if we get a little bit of a turnaround and then higher highs and higher lows, wouldn't be a bad time. Not saying to buy or sell, look into it. Remember Solana ecosystem is going to be pretty big as we continue to roll into the narrative of staying green and getting away from proof of work, etc. regardless of whether you think it's good or bad. I believe that's where the narrative is going. Turning our attention now to Bitcoin. That's where we've got to look next. 48 and a half thousand. Yesterday, we were looking at the three days. One close, two close, three closes. And I was hoping for a hit or at least a test of 52K. We didn't get the test. We got a breakdown, but we didn't break through the low uh, yet. We're at 45,700. Yesterday's low was at 46,440. So right now we are still on the weaker side because we're just not getting those higher highs and higher lows. Currently, we've had a little bit of a bounce back from the yesterday's close. Looking okay for Bitcoin at this point. So even if we were to fall to our 100% level, so I've just put on this fib now, this fib gives us our 100% projection, which comes out at 41,700, 41,800 essentially. All I'm doing is measuring this price range and then projecting it from a major high. And that gives me the 100%, which comes out dead on our 50% level of our major range, which is 41,000. So I'm still looking at a lower 40K hit, which I've been talking about for weeks now. After we called the April, April 18th, fall, that crash that came through here that took out a lot of the, the stops. And then I was looking through some weakness here. It wasn't really looking too strong. If you've seen the videos, you know what I'm talking about. And we're looking for that 54K first sign of weakness. It came through. Now, I haven't seen enough reasons to say this is a low, but 
we could see a little bounce and, and we because we haven't broken this low here maybe we come back to test it this next level is 49,800 call it 50,000 it might try might try to retest and it might fall short because it's looking more weak than it is strong um, so we're just going to keep an eye on this but overall in terms of a level to purchase even if it was here picking up some more bitcoin and it fell to 41k it's only about a 15 or so percent difference from where we are so it's not that much of a big deal and in terms of buying low selling high i think this is a much better time than fomoing in at these tops at 64,000. it doesn't take a genius to really see that you just need to have some confidence in your trading by understanding the charts and levels that we could see support at and i think 41 ish k level is a good level there but if we don't get there then this is also an okay time as well the dominance has been crushed 40 percent just trying to hold 40 percent now at around just short of 41 percent which means bitcoin is still holding its ground but well, i mean it's falling in the dominance but it's holding its ground in terms of the price and that's then leading into good moves on the altcoins which brings me across to ada ada has done very well two dollars thirty just seeing a little bit of a, a pause, temporary pause here after our next breakout yesterday into new highs of $2.46. ADA BTC crushing it. New highs again today of 4,900 Satoshis. Remember, we were looking at the breakout firstly above these levels, which was 2,600 sats, and then again at 3,200 sats, and now we're sitting all the way at 4,700 sats. So from the first breakout, we're getting very close to doubling our Bitcoin value just by investing in ADA, which is looking good. Next on the list that I wanted to have a look at is Ethereum, basically just an update. Now, it definitely looks like we have found some resistance at 150% of our major FIB extension range. So it's this tool, tr uh, trend-based FIB extension, not this tool, FIB, uh, FIB retracement. So using this uh, anchored at the low, anchored to a major top, anchored to another major low, which is a, a significant low that saw a major turn, we've hit 150%. The uh, bullish news about this is that we are extending in price ranges. So even though we'll probably get a fall from this point, uh, and like I've talked about in previous videos, it could come all the way back to $2,800 and still be well within a good bullish buy zone, which is 36% drops. That's all it is. It looks still very bullish to me. That is a good buy zone again. People are asking about that. I'm telling you what I believe is a good buy zone. Please do your own research because I can't give you financial advice. If that happens, then I've got a new point to then project the next price ranges from and we'll get new price targets. But as I said in yesterday's video, I'm still looking at around the 6400 level as it comes out here at 261 or 2.61 and then we've also got a couple of levels higher up but let's get through the 5k first and then worry about the other levels we could call anything further up you know we've done so well so far we could call 10,000 ETH 20,000 ETH at this point let's go bit piece by piece and look for the good entries and then good exits that's what matters most so ETH is uh, looking pretty good I think we'll get a bit of a pullback from here we looked at Matic on the coin market cap we can see Matic again absolutely skyrocketed first entry was back here at around 50 cents 48 50 cents when you look at this on a chart it looks crazy i've talked about this very very often when people see these price ranges and they go wow look at the, the the dollars i could have made in terms of the percentage it's great don't get me wrong but up to this point it's 200 percent if you work from these lows getting in early to that breakout point there's 800 percent but it just doesn't look as crazy it doesn't look as great on a chart but it's 800 percent better than 200 percent. this is what i'm talking about getting in early staying around for the bear markets because you will make so much more money than trying to fomo in on these massive runs that look uh, really really great in the dollar sense matic still looks strong i think it still has a lot further to go but we are coming to the the tips of probably this run here two more to go we're gonna look at solana and yfi solana is still at its all-time highs or you know trading around them we saw a lot of volume come in the last couple of days as it peaked out and then bottomed again and so as we're getting this climb the volume is looking a little bit weaker i suspect we might get a pattern similar to what we saw with ada as we test those highs a few times and then we get the breakout so i'm still sitting steady dollar cost averaging in is probably not a bad option here we have not seen a pullback to the 50 percent like we did 
further back. Uh, we didn't even see it back here. So this market has just been very, very strong. It's pushing up time after time. Now, if we come back and use one of these other major lows like here, we're still not getting a move back to 50%. So I see this very, very strong, but it just needs some time to wind up. So patience again is the game looking for the next breakout. Last one is YFI, which proves the point precisely. We saw the breakout of these highs, $60,000 nearly 100k reversed again but i think we're starting to rebuild above the old resistance levels again we've seen this on cardano if you've watched the channel many times you can see these patterns continue to play out in a bull market they work very very well uh, just keep that in mind when we get to any bear markets in the future so again it's it just allows you to remain confident and stress-free because you continue to see the same patterns time and time again so this is at a, what looks like to me is another reaccumulation above the highs. What could go wrong is if we break down and fall back into the old zone. So that would then leave us sitting uh, into this old zone for some time until we can uh, get that energy back into the market before we can take off again. Right now, I don't think that's going to happen. So I'm okay with it because I look at YFI BTC, which has skyrocketed out of its accumulation zone and now is testing the old highs from November uh, and December of 2020. So I think we'll probably just rest here for a little bit before we take off again. Wi-Fi PTC, BTC is looking pretty good as well. Remember, if you're new, you don't have to buy one whole YFI, which is $67,800. You can buy fractions of it, just like you can with Bitcoin. So that does me for today's video, guys. Thank you very much. Remember to hit the like button if you found some value from it. If you're winning, let me know in the comments. Hit the like button as well. Hit the subscribe button. Bell notification icon goes a long way to helping out the channel. Get to our 200K target before mid-year. Let's see if we can get there. And uh, look, maybe we'll do another giveaway. So make sure you're subscribing to the channel, liking the video up. I'll chat to you or at least I'll see you in the comments. I do read them all. So make sure you leave your comments down below. Twitter and Instagram Q&As. So make sure you're over there. And then also the free newsletter, which if you want to learn more about trading and investing through all markets, stocks, crypto, property, leave your email address down below. It's all free. So check that out. Thank you once again, guys. Until the next video, have more fun to get more done. Peace out.